Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. In this segment, I'm going to talk about how to construct pseudo random generators from pseudo random functions. So, um, more concretely, your goal is to construct a pseudo random generator G, which takes a CEDS. Let's assume S yes is an n bit number. <coughs> and we would like to construct, say, um, four times n or five times n or, or 10 times n, something like that. Okay. How can we? come up with a generator like this. Suppose we are given access to um, a pseudo-random function. So remember, pseudo-random function is a keyed function, right? It takes a key as an argument and the data as another argument and it gives you some random <coughs> y, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So how can we now make use of the pseudo-random function to construct a pseudo-random generator? One easy trick we can do is, Apply the pseudo random function, treat the seed, yes, it's a seed, right? Secret seed, usually secret, as a, as a key for our pseudo random function. So we evaluate, say, at point uh, zero or one, let's say one, we evaluate it one, we get some random output, and then we do the same. Uh, we concordate with um, evaluating at point two all the way until say we evaluate for example l blocks okay so let us also assume that the pseudo random function f <coughs> maps an n bit number x to <coughs> n bit number y okay so what is the size of the gfs now now we can say the size of gfs is easy now right n times l so because each, this is n bit, this is n bit, and you're doing it l times, so n times l. So you have nl bits, that's really, really powerful. You start with n bit, and you get out n times l, <coughs> excuse me, n times l bits. Okay, why is this a secure pseudo-random generator? It is a secure pseudo-random generator by the definition of pseudo-random function. So we can reason like this, uh, we can replace each of this pseudo random function by some corresponding, um, we can imagine like this, uh, we are approximating it, so sort of informally, by say some function f, random function, evaluate that function uh, at point one, and then we evaluate with some random function f2 at point two, and so on. <coughs> And we evaluate some function f l at l. That's the meaning of a random function, right? A random function is something um, that is, or, or more precisely, a pseudo random function is something that is not necessarily distinguishable or not easy to distinguish in polynomial time from a truly uniform function. So, so that's the reason why this G of S is a secure pseudo generator because the components of the generator are just bunch of pseudo random function calls, right? And the pseudo random functions by definition are approximation of real uh, random functions. Therefore, GFS is a pseudo random function. Okay, why do we need this? Maybe um, the very first question uh, usually people ask me is that, why do we need a GFS? Say, I, I want to give an example like this. Suppose you have a message GM. Let's assume uh, the message is made of say 1024 bits. And you would like to do a one-time um, one time pad algorithm on this message. So how do you do that? You need a random number R, which is also another 124 bit, right? So you need to generate a 1024 bit random number, which is not necessarily desirable all the time. So what we can do is suppose we have a, a small random number, say small s, made of a thousand, made of say 256 bits. Right now, you can apply G of S, which will give you, uh, say, you call four times on the, the above. Okay, maybe more precise. Um, you do G of S as uh, you call this four times, L equal to four. So you get four times uh, 2056, which is 1024. That's it, right? So uh, we get we get a key, which we can XR now. So we can we can easily do M. XR it with GFS for our one-time parallel calculation. 
we don't need to generate a 1024 bit random key we take a 256 bit random key and we apply our <coughs> magic uh, generator that gives us 1024 and now we can XOR these two of course the sender and receiver must agree on the same yes and they should use it only once so that's the basic idea of one time but there's one application where you would need a gfs like this there are many other applications but just to give you a flavor okay um, we can now look into an implementation so what i'm going to do is i'll show you how i implemented this i approximated um, each pseudo random function by hmac so if you don't know hmac no worries you can imagine um, this is hmac okay as a, as a black box um, we are going to do hmac of hmac requires two arguments one is the key which we will treat this this the cds itself is a key and that this is one you're evaluating at point one similarly here it's hmac of s of two let me write it here this this will be hmac of um, s comma two and so on and it, uh, you will evaluate it l times so you get l into um, n into uh, l bits in, at the end okay so that's how i'm going to implement h uh, this uh, generator okay let's get into the the demo now the, the straight away okay so what we are going to see now is a simple um pseudo random generator from pseudo random function okay so let me walk through the the core idea right here here is our pseudo random function capital f which takes the key and uh, some message x okay um, okay, so what are the things happening? I'm using the Python's uh, HMAC algorithm uh, and initialize the HMAC with the HMAC key, which is basically this key k. Convert k has to be converted into bytes. That's just low level detail. So you you, you see here k and x are used here at this this point to, to get a digest. Digest is some some random looking text. Okay, so once you have that, now we can do a couple of important things. Um, let me reload this for some reason. It's not uh, loading. Okay, so let's first show you some of the important points I wanted to make. Um, here is our main, we generate a random seed, 256 bit random seed. We print it in binary, so you should be seeing zero ones uh, when I run it. I wanted to show to you how the random function behaves by evaluating um, a pseudo random function f at point uh, one using the key s. And then I also do the same by evaluating the pseudo random function f at uh, point two using the same key s of course. This is just a little Python syntax to print something in binary um, because my capital F is returning pseudo random function is returning hex value, so I'm converting it to regular integer that's the 16, and then I'm printing it in binary. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Okay, so what I wanted to show to you is um, one and two just they just differ by only one bit, right? Um, in in binary, one means all zeros followed by one. Um, if you are representing um, a 256 bit representation, um, 255 zeros and then a one. For a two, it will be one zero at the end. So that's all, okay? We just made a small change, but look at the output, that's amazing. Uh, let me walk you through the output one by one. So I'm now running this for my seed, which is the CDS, 256 bit seed, right? The binary, that's the reason why you see zero B. And, um, what is interesting perhaps is to see the output of f of s of one and compare it against f of s of two. Uh, look here, we did only small change. We changed from one to two, but more than half of the outputs bits are flipped. <clears throat> That's because of the way HMAC um, uh, is implemented, which we don't need to worry. We view that as a pseudo random function, okay. Now we can use this idea to, to, to kind of build the constructor, um, the generator that we would like to construct. How do we, do that. I can get rid of this now, or I will comment it because that's not important. I wanted to show to you how we can now use this to build a pseudo random generator, right? Which I did it already. All I'm doing is calling the pseudo random function l times in a loop, right? And appending it. And at the end, I'm converting it to a regular integer. Okay. So we do this now. Let's let's print print uh g of s right equal to uh, for suppose you would like to print it for say 1024 right we, we start with two, 256 and we want to get 1024 that's 4l l is 4. let's look at what happens now let me clear this okay it's a it's a lot of data of course but uh, what is interesting is that here is your s here is your g of s so you get your uh, g of s which you may use it as a key or whatever you you wanted to use for 
Okay, so that's basically it. Um, all I did is essentially call the pseudo-random function repeatedly in a loop, L times, and I put them together, the plus means concatenation, and, and I got the uh, pseudo-random generator. That, that's all. So um, to summarize, what all we did is basically, we treated our seed as a key and called the pseudo-random function L times to come up with the pseudo-random generator. The individual components of our generator on the right-hand side, as you can see, each component is basically a pseudo-random function. Therefore, it's same as, uh, uh, or, 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 or approximately same as a real random function. Therefore, it is difficult to distinguish a GFS from a truly random number, n times L bit random number. Okay. If you randomly pick an n times L random number uh, and, um, um, and uh, an output that is coming from GFS, the distinguisher cannot be designed easily. So if you made it, that will be a breaking uh, HMAC or whatever pseudo-random function that you used, right? Okay. So anyway, that's an extra detail. So at this point, um, I hope that uh, it's clear that given a pseudo-random function, we can construct a pseudo-random generator. Okay. So that's basically what I wanted to show to you. Thank you very much for your attention.